Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to go on an adventure in Universe Sandbox and discover what we seem to think of as the smallest star in our galaxy, at least hypothetically. We're going to discover an unusual new system that was found in July of 2017 and find out its mystery as well. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So less than a year ago, we've discovered TRAPPIST-1, which was a very unusual, super cool red dwarf with seven terrestrial planets around it, and it was actually unusually small and unusually cool, which is why it's called super cool. It's not called super cool because it's cool, it's cool. It's called super cool because it's actually cold in comparison to other stars. Now TRAPPIST-1 is definitely interesting, it's relatively close to us, um, but we've actually started looking for more of these types of stars. and. There's actually surprisingly quite a lot of them, and we now think that many of them will have these terrestrial planets. Now, in, in July of 2017, uh, a paper was published describing a very unusual system with what seems to be the smallest of such um, beautiful red dwarfs. Now, this system actually is not what you think. It's not just a single star. As a matter of fact, it has uh, a sun-like object and we're going to place it right in the middle. It's uh, This object is going to be named EBLM J0555-57A, and its mass is um, it's about 13% higher than the mass of Sun, as is its temperature. Its temperature is about 6,000 degrees Kelvin. Now, it's a little bit hotter, it's a little bit bigger than the Sun, but it is Sun-like. Um, the main difference between this object and our sun is that it has slightly less uh, metallic materials, meaning that non-helium, non-hydrogen, non but it does have enough to actually have uh, actual planets around it, so possibly gas giants, possibly terrestrial planets. And we know that this object has another very interesting companion. And as a matter of fact, its companion is also a sun-like object. But this companion is relatively far away at a distance of just over 400 astronomical units, which is a distance from Earth to Sun, and is slightly less massive than the Sun. So this is kind of similar to Alpha Centauri system that also has these two Sun-like objects. Now let's rename this as well. This is 57b, and this is what basically they look like. Now, because they're Sun-like and because they're relatively similar to our Sun, both in temperature and mass and so on, we were quite interested to find out if we can actually discover any planets around them. This also kind of shows you the very, very early history of our solar system, because today we're convinced that our sun also had uh, basically a binary neighbor, a, a sun-like object, or basically a star, that was orbiting as a binary system around our sun, but was actually kicked out a long, long time ago. Unofficially, it's, some people refer to it as Nemesis, but this name has created a lot of conspiracy, so there is really no official name for that missing star-like object. Uh, but this gives you an idea of what our sun may have been like as well a long time ago. But because these two are sun-like objects, they are basically orange stars, we started looking for planets and discovered a very unusual object orbiting around the A object. And... We thought it was a very massive planet at first. Turns out it's not. And I'm going to show you what it is. It's, as you can probably guess, it is the smallest star we've discovered, which is our main sequence red dwarf. I'm going to take the closest, or probably the one of the more well-known um, red dwarfs to our sun, known as Barnard Star, and place it at a distance and in a, in a location where it kind of is in relation to the main star. We need to change this a little bit because its orbit takes it about 7.8 days, not 5. And we're also going to modify its size and uh, its mass. So it's about half of the mass of this. It's only about 85 masses of Jupiter. And even though this object is bigger than Jupiter, the reality is that it's also 84% uh, size of Jupiter. So basically it's smaller than Jupiter in size and its name, as you probably guessed, is uh, EBLM J0555-57AB. 
AB refers to the fact that it's orbiting the A star. Now, this star is literally the smallest star that can possibly exist. It's just um, just a little bit bigger than Neptune and Uranus, and is about the same size as essentially Saturn. If you place Saturn right here, kind of like you can see it, literally the same size. So this is the size of a gas giant, but 85 times the mass of Jupiter. In other words, it's very, very dense, uh, relatively hot as well, and does create a very unusual environment where we possibly could find very interesting planetary systems here. So these three stars might actually have a lot of unusual planets orbiting around them. Now, one thing we, we also know about this particular object, so theoretically, this is the smallest mass you can have for an object to have nuclear reaction on the inside. And although we found similar stars before, we've never found one so small radius wise. Like, let me just show you what Earth looks like in comparison. You can, you can see Earth is actually relatively big in comparison to this little star. If we were to compare it to a sun-like star, you can see Earth is tiny. It's barely even visible. It's like somewhere over there. So in terms of the actual size, um, EBLM J0555-57 AB is definitely as small as we'll probably find in the next few decades. And what's really interesting about this system is that it gives you an idea of how these unusual solar systems develop. So first of all, there's a big binary system with two sun-like objects. Then there's this very small uh, red dwarf. And in billions of years, when these two stars become white dwarfs, this star is going to change its orbit a little bit and possibly capture all of the planetary material that is in uh, this binary system and thus create its own very interesting um, world with possibly a lot of terrestrial planets, possibly some other unusual planets. But before we speculate about the future, let's maybe place a few randomly generated planets here and see how they how they do in, in terms of temperature, in terms of just, you know, being able to survive in this system. Because these stars probably have planets, we just haven't found them yet. But let's place a few of these planets around these stars. So each of these stars is going to get a few. And we're going to just place them at different distances just to see if any of them become Earth-like. So let's place one, one astronomical unit, one a little bit farther away, and one a little bit farther away. And also, let's go to the partner. B and place another Earth-like object here because this is probably the highest chance for us to find an Earth-like uh, planet. So we're going to need to go here and modify their parameters, giving them a little bit of atmosphere and also adding a little bit of water to some of them just to see what actually happens. And let's just wait a little bit and find out if, um, if any of these objects actually create something that will resemble Earth. So we're going to wait a few uh, few days, a few in-game days, and find out what happens here. So one of the objects already ran away, and that's because it's actually kind of difficult to create a binary system full of planets. Because these two stars, this one and this one, interact with each other so much, uh, having a stable orbit is not very easy. They do create a lot of interaction and um, interference with each other. So you'll see that even this object that's already super hot is going to actually lose its orbit just like this one did. All right, so let's start with some of them. Let's actually look at the chart here just to see and compare various objects. So these are the sun-like objects. This is the smallest star we've discovered. And here are our planets. And look at that. This one seems to have liquid water with a relatively nice temperature of 34 degrees Celsius. That one is way too hot. This one is way too cold. The rest are either too hot or too cold. Some of them are 50 degrees Celsius, but that's a little bit too hot as well. So this object, I believe, was placed around the B star, that's the companion that doesn't have any binary uh, attached to it. And so this here might have a high chance of 
planets that are Earth-like because it is a Sun-like object and finding planets here might be um, quite possible. But the binary system, as you'll see in a few seconds, is going to lose most of the planets because, well, first of all, the habitable zone is only here. So this is where we would find Earth-like object. But as I accelerate time here, you'll see that it's going to be very difficult for these planets to actually maintain stable orbit. Their orbit is going to change quite dramatically quite often. And even though this planet does have a chance of having liquid water and good temperature, it's about to leave the habitable zone because of the interaction with the binary. And it's going to become really, really cold really soon. And here we go. It's already getting to zero degrees and it's now froze, completely frozen over. And something just exploded in the middle as well. So as you can see, creating a comfortable, stable um, system with habitable planets around a, a very close binary like this one here it is not very easy. So the easiest way for us to find uh, planets here is going to be looking at the object known as J0557b or by waiting a few billion years until these stars become essentially white dwarfs and lose their ability to hold uh, this red dwarf. And as you can see, the red dwarf itself has its habitable zone very, very close to itself. But if we replace a planet here, uh, because of they're so close to this other star, they're going to just boil away. They're going to be super, super hot. And so there you go. That's the system we've discovered. Pretty interesting, pretty unusual and very exciting because we're going to be able to learn about creation of our own solar system and find out more about other similar systems as well. Anyway, thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned something about the smallest star discovered and about the system and come back tomorrow to learn something else you may have not known before. Let's finish this video by doing a bit of explosioning and see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye bye. And it looks like I've created some supernova. Not exactly realistic, but very, very beautiful. See you tomorrow. Bye bye.